Hi, this is Dr. Kimi Sato. In this lecture, we talk about training plan and design. It's very important to have a solid plan and then appropriate design to make sure that you can develop athletes. Oftentimes, you can easily design wrong and then they don't get any better. So learning the concepts and in theory about how to put the training program together is very important. The first lecture we're going to cover is to introduce how to set up training plan from the conceptual view. So the first one, before we actually show you the setup of the training plan, we have to mention about the planning in a conceptual way. So you have to understand why we do a certain way to put the training plan and then make sure that you understand the theoretical model of training plan. The coaches always think about the training as a stimulus to improve performance. But if you really think about this, you can easily undertrain the athletes or overtrain the athletes, and then you miss the link of optimal zone for better stimulus. So, in my opinion, the undertraining and an overtraining are training errors. So, you have to be careful that you put the right type of stimulus. Because if you say the undertraining, that means that they're not going to improve that much because you're not doing too much. Or let's say you do acute overloading, meaning that the short period of time you do a lot of stuff. Sometimes it might cause a fatigue or sometimes if you rest well right after, the performance goes up. And this one also called the overreaching, that you try to do a lot and then rest to get more the compensation from that overreaching week. And of course, if you do too much of that, it leads to overtraining. So you have to understand this model that the finding the optimal zone of the training is very important. Let's talk about the different stages of training. As I mentioned earlier, the undertraining, or also known as the detraining, that you're not doing enough, it's an insufficient stimulus. So if you don't put the enough stimulus in, you usually see the performance going down and then without knowing that the why it's going down. Or if you undertrain, you see no changes or of course that the, your performance goes down. So you have to have a right amount of stimulus. And then the second one, I mentioned this earlier about the acute overloading. Acute overloading is a positive adaptation with minor performance improvement. And then what happens here is you actually try to change your loading pattern. For example, you have a one week do the overloading and then the following week you do a little bit less. So your variance of the training volume and intensity each week is different. Or you can also do this in the within a week. So let's say you do high volume on Monday and then low volume on Tuesday and then back to high volume on Wednesday. So you actually acutely overload with training stimulus. Another stage of training we introduce is overreaching. The overreaching is a similar concept to what, you, what I just mentioned about overloading in acute way, but the overreaching is a very specific timing in a season. So let's say if I want to use the overreaching, you actually do a lot and then you have one to two weeks of resting window to fully recover from that overreaching week and then the performance goes up really high. So what's called a super compensation and what we find in this is if we actually do those kind of stuff, then fatigue management after the overreaching is very good. But also, if you do too much, you cannot recover well. So the overreaching should be very timing specific and in very short period of time. If you actually do too much of overreaching, that will cause the overtraining. And then that leads to the next one is the overtraining you lose the complete benefits by doing too much. You see no improvement and performance go down 
and then your fatigue sets in chronically, then you cannot recover within one or two days because your body completely shut down. So you have to be careful how to use the overreaching because the too much of it leads to overtraining. And this model is called the general adaptation syndrome and it meaning that the, you have that section of stimulus and then how your body adapts to it and then how you recover and then how you gain your fitness level. So this gas model is a very good representation of how body reacts to the stimulus. For example, when you actually start out, you have some stimulus and then goes up and if the stimulus is low, this steepness is, of course, it's a little bit low, but if the stimulus is too high and it goes up too high and then causes the fatigue. So we have to find the optimal progressive overloading and then once you hit that kind of plateau area, then you don't want to do too much because if you do too much, then everything goes down over fatiguing. So you kind of give the rest by creating a low volume so you can recover and then adapt and then your line is going to be in a different level. So you have to understand that the, there's a stimulus in the beginning, but once you reach that plateau, you have to rest the athlete. That's why when you actually do the overloading, you can do it acutely, but you don't want to do it in a chronic way. You have to do it relatively short term and then give athletes enough time to recover. Then once you recover, then they can actually perform better.